So <laughs> while we're while we're on the subject of Metallica, I wanted I want to ask Joey, and he's probably told this story a million times, but uh, I want to hear it straight from him. There was a point when uh, you were asked to join Metallica. I think asked is the right word, or you were being considered for Metallica. There was some interest between Metallica was interested in you. Let's say it like that. And it was after the Master of Puppets tour. You were you were being considered to possibly take Cliff Burton's place. And so the story, we all know the story that John Bush was asked to join Metallica at a very young age. And at the time, uh, Armored Saint had every bit as strong a foothold on the metal scene in California as Metallica. There was no reason for John Bush to think that that band was any better than his band. And he's sticking with his bros and he stayed with it. And he has no regrets. And I applaud that. But here's where my question is. For you, all these years later, Metallica is now the biggest metal band in the world how difficult was it for you to say no to that gig? Well, to be clear, it was, as you, it was, you you were right in saying when it, it was being considered for that. Um, then it was, they never came to me and asked me to join. Okay. So what was happening at the time was they were obviously going through a mourning period where it was obviously it must've been a terrible time in their, in their whole history. Right. Um, and, but they were trying to forge forward and, and, and continue being a working band. So they were, they started out by literally doing a cattle call of bass players and it, it just was, was awful for them. This, they ton hordes of people were coming up and trying to audition and they were just like, Oh my God, we just can't do this anymore. We need to reach out to people that we know and are friends with or have some association with and bring see if they we can get them to come and audition. At least they would know that, um, you know, that, uh, it would just be, it, you know, psychologically it was just such a better thing for them to go about that way. So it was during that period, I, I was one of several people that they were considering for that. So Lars called me one day, and I know Lars because we toured with him and had a friendship. Uh, and he basically told me what I'm telling you now. Um, so he said, you know, no promises, no nothing. We don't even know if this is going to work, but we want you to come up and let's see if it'll work. Uh, just come up for a few days and hang out and jam. So I, um, that's the decision. That was the decision I had to think about. I said, well, let me think about it. I'll, we'll talk tomorrow. So, um, that's what I did. And overnight, that's what I had to consider was, you know, am, is this something I really want at this moment in my life? Am I ready for this change? And am I ready to bail on Armored Saint? Uh, at the time when I got this phone call, we were in between recording sessions, making Raising Fear. So we had done six or seven songs already for Raising Fear and we were taking a break and we were about to go in and do another uh, five or six songs for Raising Fear. And it was during this time when I get this call. So, I mean, I'm sort of like, I mean, talk about a quagmire, you know? So I'm like, what, what am I, what do I do? You know, is this, where is my heart telling me that I really want to do? And my heart ultimately told me that I had unfinished business with, with Armored Saint. Yeah. Um, I'm a, a main co-writer. I'm a, a, you know, a founding member and I have such a long history. Bye. Have fun. My daughter's leaving. I just had to say goodbye. Oh No, that's totally fine. Um, and, uh, you know, that was the decision I had to make. Is this, am I ready to give this all up? Uh, and, and a lot of it, I knew that a lot of it was uh, creativity as well, because I knew the way that those guys worked. I knew how the machine of the Metallica machine worked. It was all about Lars and James. Yeah. Um, and, and Cliff was a big part of that, actually. He was the third, this third uh, creative force, as everybody must know by now. Yeah. Um, and he, after he left, it was it's just James and Lars. So I knew that creatively I, I would be giving a lot up and, and also I would be giving up what I had kind of signed up for with my bros from 
great school and just the friendship we had and all the work we did with Armored Saint up until that point, we're on our third major label record. Um, and it was like, it was, a, I was in that a place where I was ready to make any kind of a change like that. You know, it wasn't, you know, this is the days back when you were in one band and one band only. Like, you know, nowadays it's different now, I'm, you know, I'm in like 15 bands now, you know, <laughs> and everybody else is too. Like everybody's like, you know, I, you know, I do whatever I can to make ends meet. And that's, it's a whole different mindset nowadays. Right. And, and it's fine. I'm not saying one's better than the other. They're both noble outlooks in life and they're, they're all, it's all good. But for me at that point, um, I just, it just didn't feel a hundred percent right you know not a hundred percent i knew yeah i'd be making i'd probably have the opportunity to make more money and that was that was obvious you know um at that point um and you know it just came down to that and i just said you know if i'm not a hundred percent and i called lars the next day and i said i said these things this what i'm telling you now is what I said to him. I said, I, I might be wasting your time and I might be wasting my time. And if I have any doubts about doing that, I don't want to do that to you. You know, that's fucked up. You know, I would, I, I, why, why would I do that? You know, you, you guys are my friends and I want the best for you. I don't, maybe I didn't feel like I was the right guy yeah. for them at that point. Um, yeah. So that was a tough thing just because, for those reasons I sort of laid out, you know, I'm yeah. not saying it was easy, um, but, you know, you know, in, in hindsight, uh, it, things become much clearer, you know, and, uh, you know, my life has been like, I, I have no regrets for any decisions I've made in my life, mistakes included. I'm not saying that was a mistake, but uh, because I have a killer life, my life has been amazing. i have a great life, a great family, you know, these experiences that I've had throughout the nineties and two thousands, I would never change one of them for the world, you know? And so if you, it's funny, people ask you, you know, what would you do if you could go back in time and you, you know, you change your, your, you change that crossroads, you know? And I can never answer that question. You know, like I, I, I would hate to live that way, wondering what would life be like if I went that way? You know, I would, I would, I wouldn't have a daughter. You know, I wouldn't have my wife. I wouldn't have any of the experiences I've had. I wouldn't have friends like you guys. I wouldn't be doing this here now. I wouldn't be in this house I live in and have this really comfortable life I've had. I consider myself one of the luckiest people in the world. I'm really grateful for everything I have. So, you know, I don't have any regrets for anything that I've done, I that included. That. I no, love it. I, I, I love, love I love it all. I yeah. love everything you said. It's very yeah. special. I think a lot of people, you made a very valid point and obvious. It's a, it's an obvious point for you. Uh, but I don't think it's an obvious point for people on the outside. And maybe it is if they dig a little deeper, but I think everybody just gets shell shocked by the idea of, Oh my God, it's Metallica. How do you not join Metallica? But you made a very valid point you are going to give up a great deal of your musical creativity and your vision to join an existing team that's very strong and and has Sorry its own that. vision okay and 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 hierarchy of power and that sort of thing um and that's a very very huge thing to give up if you're a creative person so you could have yes you could have joined metallica but you would have been a hollow shell of a dude and well you know i i know it could have you could have been and i maybe i would have been really comfortable in that world too it's it's yeah. it's hard to say one way or the other you know what it could have gone different ways um i mean you you, st you start you open this pandora's box and you could stay say what if about a lot of things too sure you could say yeah, this is at a point when master of puppets was just starting to blow up but i don't think it, it, they had just Maybe they had just signed to Electra, but it was already out on Music for Nations first, mm -hmm. uh, or sorry, uh, Megaforce. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it was during that transition period when I think the accident happened. But, um, you they know, were touring, they were touring Master of Puppets when the accident happened. So, yeah, so we, Puppets like, was already we, out. We as, a, we as a collective 
you know, knowledgeable people, we had no foresight to know that the, that uh, the black album was right around the corner or that, you know, what that future would have brought them. Like right. that was, that was really the explode, the real exploding part. You know, none of us could foresee that. Sure. It was going in a, it was in a going in a direction where these guys could be as big as, you know, uh, you know, Iron Maiden or, you know, sure. you yeah. know, whatever, you know, you, you insert band, big I, band name, I, I you know, use Le- I use Led Zeppelin. Uh, it's yeah. like yeah. the Beatles. I mean, you could, you could see that, you could see that it was going in a direction, but it, there was, you know, there's no guarantees in life. You don't know that, you know, this is a for sure thing that's going to happen. And you right. know, I'm not saying that, that, that would have swayed my decision had I, if I had some crystal ball, <laughs> right. yeah. but, uh, 